Welcome to our service of the word for Trinity Sunday. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's heavenly word to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness and slander and malice and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoings and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore in us in his image. The praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. Blessed are you, Lord our God, Creator and Redeemer of all, to you be glory and praise for ever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth, by raising your Son to life, to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts, as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. The Collect for Trinity Sunday Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in the faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together now in saying the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now listen to the readings for the day. This reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 12 to 17 and 27 to 31. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with the breadth of his hand, marked off the heavens? 
Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? Who has understood the mind of the Lord or instructed him as his counsellor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him and who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge or showed him the path of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Thanks be to God. This reading is from 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 to 13. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Today is Trinity Sunday, which for me always feels a little special, having spent 15 happy years as a member of Holy Trinity Church in Stevenage. The whole Trinity weekend was a flower festival, and our feast of title on the Sunday usually involved a bishop, or an archdeacon, or perhaps the mayor, followed by wonderful tea and scones in the churchyard. Trinity is an unusual festival in that it is one of the few feast days celebrating a piece of church doctrine or theology, so an idea rather than an event. Following hard on the heels of the dramatic events of Holy Week, Easter, then the Ascension and Pentecost, Trinity Sunday closes the Easter season in style, celebrating the mystery that is revealed in the Easter church. And it is a mystery, and it lies at the heart of our salvation. In preparing for this sermon, I read an interesting piece on the history of the church's Trinity doctrine, which held a salutary caution Anyone who tries to talk about the Trinity for more than three minutes ends up speaking heresy, which is why most priests avoid it and book a visiting speaker. With that caution firmly in mind, 
I'll keep it short. Otherwise, I might end up with a nuns on the run style panic moment and end up telling you that God is a shamrock, small green and split three ways. If you haven't watched the film, then do go and watch it. So, the heart of our salvation. Why is the mystery of the Trinity so central to our salvation? The early church had little theology on the Trinity, and in fact, the earliest recorded usage of the word is about 150 years after the resurrection of Christ, where it is used to describe the relationship between Father, Son and Holy Spirit for the first time. There is clearly in the Gospels and clearly throughout the letters of Paul a sense of the three being somehow linked, as we see in today's readings. In Matthew's great commissioning, right at the end of his Gospel, after the resurrection, Jesus meets the disciples on the mountain before sending them out into the world to make disciples of all nations, baptising in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. This rare reference to all three parts of what we now know as the Trinity tells us something about the Matthean Church's principles and reflecting perhaps their baptismal practices invoking the Trinity as they brought new Christians into the Church. And then with the closing words to the Corinthians, Paul's grace echoes throughout eternity, spoken daily in our liturgy. Paul's grace makes explicit his understanding of the different natures of the Trinitarian elements, but also reveals his belief that Jesus was indeed the Messiah, the Christ, raised from the dead as he invokes the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord is the word used to refer to God throughout Jewish scripture, Therefore, we travel straight into the heart of our salvation, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, through whose death and resurrection we are saved. And here lies that deep mystery. If God did not truly become human in Jesus, then we cannot truly be redeemed, because only God can redeem us. Therefore, Jesus must truly be God. And yet, it is crucial that he become fully human, because if he isn't truly human, then his death and resurrection lose the mystery and the power. The Gospels always say he was raised, and it's passive, and this is important. No human has the power to do this. As a human, Jesus needed God's power to raise him, the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit who is sent to us at Pentecost to fill us with the divine grace. And so the mystery of the Trinity continues to baffle us and yet it is the heart of our salvation and it unfolds around us throughout Easter, Ascension and Pentecost as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit reveal their power and send us gifts of grace. And it is a mystery. In it is revealed the dynamic nature of a God so far beyond human comprehension, and yet one who chooses to operate within our created world. A God who is one in essence, oisia in the Greek, and yet distinct in three forms, but not divided. Which leads us back to the purpose of the Nuns on the Run reference to the shamrock. The shamrock leaf is one leaf, and yet it has three distinct lobes that are fully and beautifully merged to form one leaf. Although it does appear to be three separate leaves, it functions as one leaf. And this element of functioning as a unity is important for the early churches, growing out of strict Jewish monotheism. If Jesus is God, 
and God is God and the Holy Spirit is God, then are these new Easter people actually worshipping three different gods? You can feel the confusion and perhaps some fear of heresy in the hearts of the early Jewish Christians and of the Christians worldwide as those apostles went out and baptised in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. But that is what it is, a mystery beyond our comprehension. The unity, the Trinity. We have to just accept that we can't understand it and rejoice in its power. We can celebrate the baffling and rejoice in our salvation. And we can do that every day in those beautiful words from St Paul. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And we join together in the words of the Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. On this Trinity Sunday we pray in the power of the Spirit, through the name of the Son, to God the Father. Let us pray. High and holy God, robed in majesty, Lord of heaven and earth, we pray that you will bring justice, faith and salvation to all peoples. You have called us into the family of those who are the children of God. May our love for our brothers and sisters be strengthened by your grace. May we show our gratitude and praise to those who serve as our brothers and sisters in our world today to all carers, all delivery drivers, all cleaners, all agricultural workers, all cashiers, all who work on low wages, all who live in difficult conditions. Thank you, Father, for them, and that you bring us together into one great family. Help us to be one, as you are one. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Saviour, Lord of the Church, light of the world. You call us to shine like stars in the world, so that those in darkness come to you. May our lives shine as a witness to the saving grace you have given for all. May we see your love and hope and light come to those we love, those we pray for those we have been holding in our hearts during the period of thy kingdom come. Those who are our neighbours, our friends, those who we do not know, those we see on the streets, those who have no home, those who have no hope. Shine out, Lord Jesus, light of the world, and shine through us, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, Counselor, power from on high, God's breath and generosity, you have called us to be a temple where the Holy Spirit can dwell. Give us clean hands and pure hearts so that our lives will reflect your holiness. Help us to stand against injustice, to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. 
to be your hands and feet and voice in our hurting world. Holy Spirit, lead us to your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, Son and Spirit, three in one and one in three, you have called us to be members of your body, your unity, so that when one rejoices, all rejoice together, and when one suffers, all suffer together. We ask for your comfort and healing power to bring hope to those in distress. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, Yvonne Tyrrell, John Hake, Agnes Penny, Jill Jenkin, Liz Taylor, Kay Simpson, Pam Jasper, Brian Horrell, Gareth Lancaster, Martin Hamm, Johnny Mann, Catherine Burridge, Jane Everett, Sandra Stewart, and all those we hold in our hearts and our own personal prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have called us to be the bride where you, Lord, are the bridegroom. Prepare us for the wedding feast where we will be united with you forever. We commend into God's eternal care the faithful departed. Maurice Johnson, Shelley Bridgman, Adrian Pethick, Phil Sleeman, Wendy Martin, Peter Harris. And we ask for your care and compassion and strength for those who grieve. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and grace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord.